tree, a guy, guy who did 160,000 points on one of the teams. Let me get me medic. Up. Sorry, again, medic. I was in the middle of just like. Uh, I didn't. I didn't see that. I just saw. Various, that was at the I top. bet. Various I points that we bet. Were, got to see, but. Uh... Hey Wallace, bro, can you just like win, win? I believe you. Wait, pipe that? down on the reses. This guy's doing the so infinite point challenge. Like, wait, when he left the party. What's up, more? So oh, this I'm guy's doing the infinite point challenge. I can't win, bro. Guys, just resing too many people. Dude, Wallace is 133,000 <laughs> points. Him. He's a res master. Bro, Honestly, is not him. bad. 100k, 100k, 200k. 200K. Dude, he. Uh, where's Wallace got 200k points that game? Yeah, no, he knows. He what? knows. What how the to farm fuck? I came, I saw, I conquered. I. Uh, oh. All right, guys, before we dive into this, I got to put out some disclaimers. Playing the game this way is not for everyone. This is a tactic strictly for farming the most amount of score slash XP as efficiently as possible. This strategy is most effective with a full squad of eight players working together. If you're in a clan and can have a full clan squad with 12 players, you'll see even larger gains. This strategy can work as a solo player. The gains won't be as large, but they'll still be very efficient. And the strategy works in conquest and domination on any size map. If you have a full squad or even as little as three people, you'll see the best gains in 127 versus 127 Conquest. If you're playing solo, you'll probably have the best luck in 64 versus 64 Domination. But like I said, this will work effectively with any party size on any Conquest or Domination map. How's the squad clean? I don't know how that'll play out. Let's lay out though and have a listen to these comps. I got you, Terminal. I got you. I got you. I'm on D. Man, tactical. People playing battle bit tactical. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get into it. There are six steps to efficiently point farming. Step one, be squad leader. Step two, mark objectives and follow the marks. Step three, use rally points. Step four, always be moving, always be marking. Step five, don't die. Step six, avoid spawning on objectives if you do die. Step one, be squad leader. Ah, uh, is it cool if I'm oh squad leader? Wait, yeah, I guess if you want to be. Yeah, just like in, uh, if it's conquest, so I can put rally points down and shit. Go for it. Yeah, thank you. This is the most important step. Uh, basically, the way this game works is squad leaders are rewarded heavily for having their squad follow their orders. So as a squad leader, every time you mark something, if your squad follows your mark, you get a bonus 400 XP. This stacks up, this adds up fast. This is how you get the giga big points. Whenever you create a party at the main menu, you automatically become squad leader. If you're playing, if you make a party with your friends and you join a server, you'll automatically be in your own squad as squad leader. So there's plenty of ways to make sure that every time you go into a server, you're always squad leader. If you're playing alone and you go into a game, you might be in a squad all alone, but at the start of the next game, more often than not, they will fill you with randoms. So you'll still be a squad leader with people you don't know, but like it still works out. You have to be squad leader. It's the most important part to this entire thing. Step two, mark objectives and follow the marks. Squad leaders can mark objectives as targets for their squad by pinging them. When a squad leader marks an objective, they are rewarded with 400 XP for each squad member that follows the order. The squad leader is also counted as a squad member, so you'll receive a bonus 400 XP if you're the only one there, or if you're playing solo. This bonus 400 XP stacks for every squad member on the point. That means if all 8 squad members capture a point, you receive a 3200 bonus XP reward. That's the equivalent of 16 kills. These bonuses are also applied when neutralizing an objective. That means you can get 6400 XP in a matter of seconds just off these bonuses alone. Add in the 2000 points you get from neutralizing and capturing a point. Uh... Yeah, so if you're moving as a full unit and you're doing this non-stop, this is the best and fastest way to gain XP. Along with this, bonus XP is also earned when getting kills on Mark's objective. A bonus 200 XP is given for every kill that is counted as attacking or defending an objective. This means that if you have a point that's not yours marked and you killed someone in the capture radius, you get a bonus 200 XP. That's double the XP of a regular kill. Same thing is if you're going leaving a point that you've already captured and you kill someone trying to take it from you really fast, you get a bonus 200 points. 
These You only get these bonus points if they're within the zone that counts as contesting. This is a big reason why Conquest is better than Domination if you have a big group. Because a lot of the Conquest points are much larger than the Domination points. So most of the kills you get will count as attacking the objective. Three, use Rally Points. After you capture your first two objectives or first two squad goals are followed, you'll have 200 squad points. You get 100 squad points every time a squad goal is accomplished. Uh, with these 200 squad points, you can build a rally point. The rally point is in the build menu. Uh, default bind it to holding down middle mouse button or the letter O. You can go into your key binding and it's called squad leader uh, or squad leader menu. You're going to want to change that key bind to something you can press easily also because sometimes holding middle mouse button can be a problem and you'll unping something because that's your same thing as your default ping key. So I recommend putting it on something you can press fast because you can also quick build walls with this. Uh, it's a really useful thing. It's really important. So yeah. So you're going to want to get a rally point down. You're going to want to put your rally point down somewhere near the two objectives that you plan on spamming. Uh, you can either put it somewhere that's hard to reach and fortify it, or you can try and hide it in plain sight. I'm a big fan of hiding in plain sight. You put it in an obvious ass spot. And unless people see you coming, leaving the spawn beacon, they'll really never know that it's there. Hiding in trees is super useful. Hiding in the enemy spawn is super useful. Just put it in places that people normally will never go. The biggest use of rally points is when you die, if you have no squad mates to respawn on or there's no good angles to spawn on, you have a static spawning point. You hold down deploy for two seconds on it and it has infinite spawns for you and everyone in your squad. This is like the great, it's the great resetter. So if everything's going bad and you need a reset, you just reset at your rally point. Step four. Always be moving, always be marking. After successfully following an order, the game will sometimes auto-mark a new objective. It can be helpful at times, but can also grief you out of bonus XP at other times. So make sure that you're always actively marking whatever you or your squad mates are attacking. Also, always be moving. There's no point in sitting and waiting around for action to come to you. We aren't playing for kills or KD, we are playing strictly for score. The second you're done with an objective, get moving to the next one. You can almost always catch a timing and completely avoid the incoming Zerg of defenders coming to recapture a point you just took and get a free capture on the point they were previously stationed at at the same time. Almost every domination or conquest map has at least two points that are within 250 meters of each other that you can just spam run back and forth between. With good movement and map awareness, you should almost always be fighting on an objective, meaning that whatever kills you do get, they will be rewarded with the bonus XP. Step 5. Don't die. Obviously, this is easier said than done, but if you do happen to get gunned down, avoid the innate desire to hold down spacebar and insta give up. Wait for a res or something. Laying on the floor in your shade might be painful, but waiting 15 seconds to get res in a good spot on the map is way better than full dying and having to spend the next three lives getting back to the same position you were just in. Almost always, if you wait long enough, you will get revived. There are obvious exceptions, but you will be surprised how more often than not you will get revived. Uh, examples of these exceptions... You have all your squad mates up in a good spot and you know you can spawn on them. Uh, no matter what though, you should always wait the seven seconds that you have, the natural seven second timer, it just to be a human ward and just observe the situation. After those seven seconds, if it's safe to spawn on someone, you can give up and then spawn on them if you're unresable. That's basically the big idea is you should always wait those seven seconds. I understand you can go full tilt and just hold down space bar sometimes. Try and wait the seven seconds for the love of God. Just wait, wait for him. Step 6. Avoid spawning on objectives. If you do die and don't get resed, use everything in your power to avoid spawning on an objective. Almost always there's going to be some random enemy holding some weird off angle as you try to leave an objective. It's best if you can either spawn on a squad mate or spawn on your rally point. If you don't have that option and you do have to spawn somewhere, I highly recommend just spawning on a vehicle. If you're playing Conquest, if you're playing Domination, try and spawn on a point that your whole team isn't camping around. So most of the time in domination, there's one point that has about 80% of both teams fighting for control of the area around it. Don't go to that point. Go to another one. And if you have to go to the main base, go to the main base so at least you have a maneuverable route and you understand where the enemy is moving on the map. A big part about this and what makes it so effective is knowing how enemies are moving on the map. You want to avoid conflict with like big major clumps at all costs. You only want to take small fights, 1v2s, 2v2s, 3v2s, stuff like that. You don't want to be taking the, the 8v40s that you do when you're kill hunting. When you're going for score, it's all about avoiding conflict on places that aren't the point. The only fights you ever want to take are on the point.
But yeah, with all these steps combined, it's pretty easy to run up a lot of score really fast. Uh, I was able to do this in a lobby, probably the sweatiest battle bit lobby that you could play in in a 64v64. And we were running numbers at like 7,000 score per minute. Uh, if you actually care and want to do this and you have eight people dedicated to it, I don't see how you don't get 250,000 score in just a regular public match. Just spam running the back flags and not stopping no matter what. Uh, it's the most effective means of getting XP. And it's also really, really easy. You're just playing the objective. You don't need gun skill. You don't need anything. The only advantage you get by being good at the game in this is understanding how to move around the map and take advantageous fights at all times. That's really it. But I was playing with a lot of people that don't really play the game or have very few hours on the game. And they were still it on the top of the leaderboards right alongside me. Obviously, they weren't as high as me because I'm getting squad leader bonus. But everyone in the squad eats when you do this. It's the most efficient thing for everyone in your squad. Uh, it's what I would recommend is if you are playing with a group of friends, just take turns, different games, different guys be a squad leader, or you can do just you boost kind of do it like a boosting system where you make one guy squad leader. And then until he gets max level, then you swap, figure it out, however you want to do it. But yeah, super effective way, super easy way to play the game. And it's also, you're playing the game kind of the right way. Cause you're literally just playing the objective which is why I don't think of this as like an exploit or anything like that. You're literally just playing the objective because the number of objectives that your team controls determines how many tickets that you're going to lose no matter what, no matter what's occurring on the screen. Because the number of objectives that your team holds changes the static number of tickets that are lost every minute. So you always want to have control of more objectives than the other team. So even though you're not killing people, making them lose tickets in that way, you're making them lose way more tickets by controlling more objectives. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate it a lot. Uh, if you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, all those things. I'll upload the full matches from all of the matches that we played on Twitch Rivals. So you can see just like a basic layout for five different maps in 64 versus 64 domination. I'll also be uploading a, a solo game where we got like 120k XP on Tents of Town. Just, I was playing by myself. I didn't have like comms with the people I was playing with. I was just solo queuing. And then I got filled with a random squad. Just to show you that this is super possible even when you're alone if you just commit to the cause. So yeah, appreciate y'all. Be easy. Take care of yourselves. Tell your people you love them. I, you don't know what might happen. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Yeah, how he does it? Stuck in the